Hello everyone, my name is Edith Fosimano and today I'll be giving a presentation over my research work over the past year. So over the past year, I've been looking at the oxidation of ethylene by group 7B of the complexes of the form LMO3. And I use DFT or density functional theory as the quantum mechanical model in performing this theoretical study. So as a computational and um, theoretical chemist, I am dedicated to applying state-of-the-art computational techniques in understanding processes of nature at fundamental scales of matter. So in quantum chemistry, we make good use of um, equations such as the Schrodinger equation. And after that, the data that we get, we use this data or the energy values that we get, we use these energies to explain the reaction mechanisms and also dynamics of any physical property in question of chemical, biological, and also physical processes. Experimentalists then pick up these ideas and then apply them in biotechnology, nanotechnology, and drug design. Over the past years, oxidation reactions have shown considerable relevance. And one typical reaction, oxidation reaction, is the is the hydroxylation of olefins. So in here, we try to form uh, vicinal diols from uh, the addition of ethylene to osmium tetroxide. But the issue about this reaction one was it was with its mechanistic details. So initial proposals was that the olefinic moiety has across the OOSO functionality in a three plus two manner to form a dioxalate before undergoing hydrolysis to form diols. However, due to the oxidation abilities of the transition metal um, also complexes, um, the Sharpless and his group proposed that the reaction rather goes to the two plus two addition where we form um, a metal oxygen, which now serves as a precursor for the formation of the dioxalate. Over the past years, there have been several quantum works to study the reaction mechanisms of the addition of ethylene to osmium tetroxide. So in here, the red lines represent the three plus two pathways and the two uh, black lines represent the two plus two pathways. So from this energy profile, it is evident that the addition of ethylene to um, osmium tetroxide will proceed via the three plus two because we are seeing low activation barriers for the three plus two as compared to the two plus two. And also we are seeing negative reaction energies telling us that the three plus two reaction surface is quite spontaneous as compared to the formation of the metal oxygen from the two plus two surface. Apart from the mechanistic details, another issue about this reaction is with the um, several factors that demerit the use of osmium tetroxide. So factors such as its expensive nature, uh, scarcity, toxicity, and a whole lot demerit the use of osmium tetroxide. So there's a need for researchers to um, look for um, other oxidants that can uh, perform better than osmium tetroxide in oxygen transfer catalysis. So in here, um, so on my left, represent the computational details. So we actually all modeling were done on the Spartan and Gaussian modeling programs. So for the equilibrium geometries or structures on the minima, um, they were run after minimizing the structures interactively by the uh, cyber force field. And after running them at the DFT level, there are uh, any degree of freedom, um, any frequency corresponding to any degree of freedom in that system had um, a real frequency. And this was different from the uh, structures obtained at the saddle point. So the transition state obtained from the scans, dynamic constraint, and also the electron flow method, it could be seen that the reaction, uh, the vibration corresponding to the reaction coordinate uh, um, had an imaginary frequency. So in this work, I will explore the three plus two pathway, that's pathway A, leading to the formation of the um, intermediate 1A, the dioxalate through the transition state TS1A, which can rearrange through TS2A to form 1B. I will also look at pathway B, which is the alternative 2 plus 2 pathway, and also look at how oxygen can serve as precursors for the formation of oxygen, uh, epoxides. I also look at pathway C, where we get to see the direct addition of the oxaligan to the olefinic moiety. So my results in discussion, the first one looks at the interaction between the 
frontier molecular orbitals. So for all um, uh, 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 anionic computer structures that the perinate, pertechnitate, and the uh, permanganate complexes, it was seen that the flow of electrons rather moved from the also complex into the lumo of the plane, which was quite different from what we see. We saw in the analogs of these with 7 b also complexes, where rather the oxo, uh, the lumo of the ethylene, but are coupled with the lumo of the oxo complexes. This can be accounted for by the uh, high electronic density on the um, um, anionic complexes due to their negative charges. So these are the energy profiles to explain the energetics here. So the black lines represent the uranium catalyzed pathway, the, the red lines represent the TC, and the blue represents the MN. So in here, it is evident that for you to form that, the MnO4 is the, uh, how do you call it, is the best or is the most kinetically and thermodynamically favored pathway because we are seeing the lowest activation barrier, which is a kinetic property. We are also seeing the lowest reaction energy, which is a thermodynamic property. In all cases, the three plus two was favored over the two plus two. However, the formation of the poxides was not possible for the MN pathway. And in the um, TC and the RE pathway, the formation of the poxides was possible through the two plus two pathway. Um, you know, was not possible in all cases. So this rather tells us that if you are having your permanganate, your perinate, and your pertechnate complexes, they would exclusively yield diodes. However, this was different in all cases, uh, in, in the analog substituted cases. So for MnO3F, it could be clearly see that there was no way we could form diodes, but however, the two plus one pathway was quite feasible indicating um, that for MnO3F, it would epoxidize polythenes exclusively, whereas um, the um, TCO3F and REO3F would give racemic mixtures of epoxides and diodes. However, they are, uh, energetics does not favor their formation and at high temperatures, they are likely to fall. In conclusion, it can be said that still sharpless argument on the mechanistic details that not apply for these types of oxidation and the addition for, for these types of reaction rather goes to the three plus two pathway. And for the direct three two plus one pathway, it's only feasible for the MnO3L. In all cases, the catalyzed pathway or the structures were were uh, unstable on a singlet, uh, were, were stable on the singlet surface, except for the formation of the dioxalate from the MnO3F catalyzed pathway, that's a dioxomangana 2,5 dioxalone intermediate. And in all cases, as said earlier, the homo of the ethylene couples with the lumo of the complex in all cases, except in the anionic cases. Thank you. Um, the further details uh, on this work can be obtained um, from the paper that is attached at the first page. Also, um, if you have, um, I'll be willing to answer questions on, um, on this presentation. Thank you.